Hi, everyone, and welcome to our virtual project information meeting to discuss our invasive plant management program. As noted in the postcards that we sent out recently, we'll be starting a project in your neighborhood in late October. It involves the removal of invasive vegetation on Pinellas County owned property at the intersection of 109th Avenue and Lake Park Drive and replanting it with native trees. This is property that our Public Works Department maintains. Our project team has already met with a few of the homeowners who will be directly impacted. Tonight, we're here to share information with the community at large and to answer your questions. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the project website within a few days. That's pinellascounty.org slash invasive, and we'll put that up on a slide again later. We're gonna start out tonight with a presentation by Alyssa Barrow, Director and Section Manager for Pinellas County Mosquito Control and Vegetation Management. After the presentation, we're gonna have a Q&A session where you can ask questions or offer comments. We're scheduled to go until 7 p.m. tonight, but our plan is to answer all questions and take all comments. We'll go over the Zoom tools when we get to that portion of the program. But at this time, please welcome Alyssa for her presentation. Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Tony. Thank you for the introduction. Let me just share my screen here and we will get started. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Um, I'm really excited to be able to talk to you guys more about our invasive plant management program and more specifically the project at 109th and Lake Park Drive. I wanna give you just a brief overview of our invasive plant management program, and then we'll start talking more specifically about the, the project site uh, that we're all here for tonight. This program in specific is a coordinated effort through a couple of different groups in Pinellas County Public Works. And what we're doing is we're looking to control invasive vegetation and restore native plants in ha and habitats in property that we maintain. And through this, we're gonna create a blueprint for how we can do this in areas throughout the county that is both economically responsible and environmentally friendly. There's a lot of different benefits to removing invasive plants. So here at the county, we're we're entrusted with being good stewards of the land here. And part of that is removing invasive plants. Invasive plants can not only be a nuisance, but they are actually damaging to a lot of these areas for several different reasons. So by removing them, what we can do is protect our vulnerable ecosystems. We can stop the spread of these plants onto, um, onto public and private property and a lot of times these plants cost us a lot of money in terms of time and resources to be able to keep at bay. So by replacing the plants with our native habitat again, we're gonna be able to increase efficiency of county operations at the same time. I'm gonna be talking about native plants and invasive plants throughout this, uh, throughout this talk. So I wanted to give you a few definitions so you know what I'm talking about. When we talk about a Florida native plant, we're talking about a plant species that's presumed to be in Florida before European contact. And these are the kinds of plants that are the basis of our habitats and ecosystems here. They provide food and shelter for our wildlife and it's really important to be able to protect them. An invasive plant is a non-native plant that's spreading on its own and causing environmental or economic harm. A really good example of this is you can see in the picture here on the screen, this is a plant that's called water hyacinth. And this is actually a water area that should be open and have a lot of native vegetation. But as you can see, it's really taken over by this plant and all of our native plants are crowded out. And this is a bad thing for both the environment and also for people if you were trying to navigate that area through a boat. So the site that we're actually looking at and here to talk about today is at 109th Avenue North and Lake Park Drive. And you can see this on our map here. There's a couple of different parcels that we're looking at in particular. So the first one is this large one that's the entrance going along 109th here, bordering Lake Park Drive and also bordering Brian Derry Road over here. We're also going to be uh, controlling invasive plants in this parcel over here. We're going to be focusing a lot on the right of way that goes along the road over here at Lake Park Drive. But in addition to that, we will be looking further into this parcel to see if there are any invasive plants that we need to address further in there. 
let's talk about some of the benefits to this particular project site. This site has numerous invasives that actually act as a seed source that are able to infest different areas, including in your own community and other areas. We have some of the plants that obstruct the right of way. And these can also be a nuisance for private property, either by going as a seed source that drops into your yard or even growing over into private property. By removing these invasives, we're gonna be able to allow for these native plants that are already present at the site to flourish and really add value to that green space. It'll be further beautify the area. Um, the replacement with native plants is also going to help us with reducing maintenance needs. When I'm talking about this, one, uh, one area in particular is along that right of way. So the right of way has Brazilian pepper tree, which I'll introduce in a little bit, that grows quite quickly and requires a lot of maintenance and resources to be able to keep back and keep that right of way safe. Many of you have probably seen us in here in recent years trying to tackle that exact problem. And by being able to remove that and replace it with native plants that aren't going to have the same growth habit, we're going to be able to not only increase our efficiency, but make it so that we don't have to go in there and knock back this Brazilian pepper tree on a regular basis. Additionally, we're going to be coming in and doing routine inspection because this will become a site for future maintenance, continued maintenance, and this will be able to help address any debris or trespass, issue, trespass issues the project site may have. This map that we're looking at right here is actually an inventory of the native inv and invasive trees that was done by our own urban forestry section. When we're looking in here, you can see with my arrow here that any of these blue dots are actually some of our native trees and anything that's a red dot is going to be an invasive tree. I additionally want to point out this green shaded area because there's only uh, a minimal amount of dots in here, but what this actually is, is an area, uh, an area of Brazilian pepper tree that is extremely thick and will require a contractor to be able to remove. Additionally, we can see another area over here. This is actually another area of Brazilian pepper tree that we're gonna be focusing on. I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see a little bit more about what I'm talking about. One of the things that I really want to point out with this map is the number of blue dots in there, which are our native trees. This site actually has a lot of really wonderful native plants already in there. So our goal in focusing on this is really to spot treat the areas that have the invasives, as well as tackle this really big area of Brazilian pepper tree in the, in the back, and then replant it with that native vegetation. Like I said, there's a lot of beautiful native plants at this site already. So these are some photographs recent photographs of this site. There's a lot of oak trees in here. There are pines mixed in. There's cabbage palm. And there's also other understory plants like this beautyberry right here, which is a really great plant and resource for wildlife. When I'm talking about the invasive plants that we're going to target, I said that this site has numerous ones. We're really gonna focus on the species that are listed on the state noxious weed list. Now the state noxious weed list is uh, produced by uh, FDAX, which, which is the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. These are plants that are recognized to be invasive. And remember when we said invasive, those are plants that are documented to have environmental and economic harm. Additionally, any of the plants that are on this list for the state of Florida are not uh, legal to sell nor to replant anywhere. So these are really some of our heavy hitters in the state of Florida. Going through these different plants here, if you look at box A, box A is a plant called lead tree, and that's definitely mixed into this site. Most often in this site, lead tree is actually a very large tree, and it's really noticeable when it has those really long seed pods on here, which are also really good at dispersing into different areas. Plant B is Brazilian pepper tree. 
And in the state of Florida, Brazilian pepper tree is one of our worst invaders. And in Pinellas County, that is no different. We see Brazilian pepper tree in a lot of different areas. Now, why are we so concerned about Brazilian pepper tree? Brazilian pepper tree grows incredibly quickly and it can really take over an area and start to crowd out a lot of our native plants. I really want you to focus on this box here, the small box B. Brazilian pepper tree creates these dense thickets. And as you can see in that picture, there's nothing growing underneath it. Part of this is due to the plant actually shading out that area. But the other aspect to this plant is it's what's called allelopathic, which means it puts a chemical into the ground and into the soil that makes it difficult for any other plant to be able to grow. The other thing with Brazilian pepper tree is if you're anything like me and allergic to poison ivy or poison oak, Brazilian pepper tree is actually in the same family, Anacardiaceae. And that means if you're allergic to those, it's highly likely that you're allergic to Brazilian pepper tree because it has the same type of chemical in its leaves. So there's a lot with Brazilian pepper tree that make it one of our worst invaders. And this site is no different. We have quite a bit of it here. The next box here is C. This is air potato and this is actually a vine. The, all of these photos that you're seeing here except for A were actually taken on site. So the air potato at this site really blankets a lot of the area and as you can see it's a vine that can actually grow up uh, on top of other plants and shade those out as well. So it can be a huge problem. The reason why it has the name air potato is you can see in this box here, this is what's called a bobble. And the bobble is what's creating the new plants and it's named after that because it looks somewhat like a potato. Finally, the last uh, invasive plant that I really want to highlight that's at this site is what's called carrot wood. And at this site, we have a mixture of not only these large trees, but also a lot of seedlings that are in the area. And Brazil, uh, not Brazilian pepper tree, carrot wood is another very, it creates a lot of different seeds. And so those seedlings pop up everywhere. Again, this is one of those that's going to crowd out our native plants. So by removing these plants out of this site and in the right of way, we're going to be able to not only let the native plants that are already here thrive, but we're going to be able to replant areas that were heavily infested and help restart those native plants. At this time, I'm going to try and take you on a virtual tour of the site so you can get a better look at what we're looking at. So as you go through this virtual tour, I want you to try and pay attention for some of those plants that we talked about. At the very end, you're going to see that big strip of Brazilian pepper tree that we talked about. But also as you do the walkthrough, you're going to see those oaks and those pines that are mixed in there that are really great natives that are the basis for this site.
right, hopefully that virtual tour was able to give you a really good view of what we're looking at at this site. Like I said, at the very end there, you were able to see that thicket of Brazilian pepper tree that I was talking about, including all of those branches that come together and have no other plant life underneath them. That's going to be a huge area that we're going to be tackling. So in terms of our approach and our timeline, we're looking at November of 2022, of for the removal of the invasive plants, and this will be done through a contractor. Some of you may have met me and my crew before. Uh, back in February of 2021, we were out working at the site uh, using chainsaws to try and tackle that Brazilian pepper tree in the back, and it became very clear that the Brazilian pepper tree back there is so thick that chainsaws are really not the most appropriate way and efficient way to be able to remove the Brazilian pepper tree. By using the contractor, we're going to be able to remove all of these invasive plants in roughly a two week time period and be able to really use the correct tools to be able to do it. Now in January of 2023, this is when we plan to replant the site with the native plants. And that's what I'm going to get into next is where are we replanting and what kinds of plants will we be looking at. In 2023 and beyond, this is when the site becomes uh, a, a routine site that we check through vegetation management. It will be added to our cycle and it will be continuously maintenanced by county staff. So let's talk a little about replanting of the native plants. Earlier in the presentation, I showed you this map right here, which is a big uh, blow up that had some of our replantings on it. Now, some of those areas of invasive plants have are not as dense as others. So when we're just spot treating and removing some of the invasive plants where it's around a lot of natives, what that's gonna do is open it up for those natives to really flourish and thrive. So those areas won't be replanted. However, we do have several areas that have quite a bit that's going to be removed. Specifically, when we're talking about that green shaded area that I was pointing out before, that's that thick Brazilian pepper tree. Along the canal, there's a lot of lead tree and Brazilian pepper tree in this area. And there's this area right here that is actually the removal site when we were out with our chainsaws where we were able to get a section of the Brazilian pepper tree removed. This and all these areas will be replanted with a whole palette of different native plants. Additionally, back here, going along the fence line here, we're going to add in some larger trees that are going to add an additional sound and visual barrier for your neighborhood. Some of the other areas in the right of way, such as this spot right here that has a huge patch of Brazilian pepper tree, those will also be replanted. So any area that we're going to have a large area of the infestation removed, which is really this area, this area going along the back and up in here, we're going to be replanting with different native plants. What we're going to be using is a mixture of trees and shrubs. So we have Southern red cedar, sugarberry and mahogany as some of our larger trees. Additionally, we're also going to be using American Elm, Walter's Viburnum, Ironwood, Buttonbush, and Wax Myrtle. Finally, one of the most critical pieces of this entire plan is the continued maintenance. The reason why continued maintenance is so important when we're in removing invasive species is that we don't want the area to be reinfested. What we do when we remove the invasive species is that a seed bank is left behind. So even though those large plants are removed, they've been putting seeds into the ground for a long time. You maybe can see it. These little red dots here are actually Brazilian pepper tree berries. And this is another photo directly from that site. As we remove those plants, all of these seedlings are going to try and pop up. So we'll frequent the area at a higher frequency within that first six months to a year to make sure that those seedlings are kept at bay. Eventually the seed bank starts to dwindle down and you don't have as many seeds that are going to be growing, but we will continue to maintain the area because we don't want that reinf reinfestation. Additionally, because we're going to be replanting with native plants, any of those areas that were really highly uh, 
used a lot of resources to maintain, those will no longer be as resource heavy and labor intensive as before. And that'll be able to keep our costs lower. So as we keep that area free of infestation, we're able to keep our costs low. The last one that I do want to touch on is this little red beetle over here. So I mentioned that we have air potato blanketing this site. Air potato actually has a biological control agent, which is this beetle that only eats Brazilian pep or only eats air potato. This beetle has actually already been released at this site, and we've actually found evidence that it seems to have established and be eating its way through the air potato there. So while our crews will be making sure to help the beetle out and ensure that that infestation keeps going down, we'll keep checking the beetle levels to make sure they're doing their job. And just a note, because the air potato beetle is only on air potato, you don't have to worry about this beetle infesting any of your plants, eating any of your plants, or even laying eggs on them. All they're interested in really is the air potato. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it back over to Tony. Thanks, Alyssa. That was uh, very interesting um, and well done. So we have, a, uh, we have a panel of experts who are here tonight to answer your questions and hear your comments. Uh, you've met Alyssa, and now I'll introduce the others. First, we have Susan Goble Canning, Director of Pinellas County Stormwater and Vegetation. Hi, Susan. Good evening, everyone. Next up from Pinellas County uh, Urban Forestry, our tree expert, Carolyn Sheetham Rhodes. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And also from Mosquito Control and Vegetation Management, Environmental Specialist, Kaylee Travis. Hi, Kaylee. Hi, everyone. In just a second here, I'll share a slide. So now it's your turn to answer, uh, to ask questions or offer comments. For those of you who are new to Zoom, if you move your cursor to the bottom of the screen, you'll bring up a toolbar that includes a Q&A icon and a raised hand. You'll see those circled there in the slide. For tonight's meeting, you'll have three ways to ask a question or offer a comment. First, you can type it into the Q&A box. Second, you can click on the raised hand icon to be placed into a queue to be called on to speak verbally. And third, if you called in, you can press star nine on your keypad to be placed into that same queue. If you're having difficulty, if you're having difficulty, a technical difficulty with Zoom, you can call in on your cell phone or landline at the numbers shown on the screen. Those numbers are 312, 626-6799 or 646-558-8656. Our goal is to answer every question. And as we do that, we'll mix in the type questions, raised hands and call-ins. To respect, be respectful of everyone's time, please limit your questions or comments to two minutes so that we can get to everybody. We've got a pretty small um, uh, crowd here tonight, so I, I don't think that'll be a problem. So let's get started. I'm gonna turn it over to Kaylee and she'll moderate the Q&A and she will either answer your question or direct it to the appropriate panelist. Kaylee. Our first question is going to go to Carolyn. Is there a program to remove invasive plants from private property that is affecting our property? Thanks, Kaylee. Um, not at this time. There is not a specific program uh, provided by Pinellas County uh, there are, though, a lot of resources available through the Pinellas County Extension Service to help you identify non-native species and um, to provide you with information on how you might control them in your yard, as well as uh, suggesting native plants to replace those. So, Carolyn, the next question is, how long will it take for the new native plants to get established? Great question. Um, typically our establishment period is anywhere between 90 days and a year. And that kind of depends on the size of the material that we have. Smaller material, we might get established within that classic 90 day period that we're watering and maintaining. It may take six months to a year for a larger tree, say something that was in a a container that was 18 to 24 inches in diameter, a tree that might be anywhere between six and 10 feet tall. So we can have, there will be uh, maintenance of this material. Once it's installed, we will have folks who will be watering 
and assuring that these trees survive uh, that establishment period. Okay, Carolyn, so another one for you. How can we get the large mature carrot wood trees that were used as landscape plants further south along Lake Park Drive removed? Well, I'm not altogether sure if those are in the right of way or not. Um, if they happen to be in the right of way, at the moment, um, our current level of service does not afford us the opportunity to remove those trees. Um, special projects like what Alyssa's team is working on now uh, can address sometimes on our properties. Uh, but in our right-of-ways right now, urban forestry and landscape services, the, the limit of our resource to address trees are those trees that are a potential hazard to the community now that may be dying or dead that need pruning or removal. Uh, we don't proactively remove non-native trees, but as our resources change and move forward, we hope that we will be addressing those. All right, Carolyn, another one. Do you have a visual representation of what this will look like once mature? No, I don't. But if you do take a look at some of those, I believe uh, Alyssa's team has uh, provided everyone with, um, uh, I, I believe possibly the uh, tonight's presentation where it will be available. And you can take a look at those tree and shrub species that we have uh, suggested will be used for our replanting. And if you simply do an internet search on those, you can find pictures of those in mature, um, um, in mature forms to get a better idea of what this will look like. Thank you, Carolyn. So Alyssa, we're gonna go over to you. Will this procedure affect any of the wildlife that may be living in the area? That's a really good question, and it realistically shouldn't affect the wildlife that's living in this area. So they should be doing very uh, targeted uh, removals of these trees, and we're going to ensure that they're protecting all of that other the native plant life that's in there. So there's room for the wildlife to be able to move from maybe the Brazilian pepper tree infested area. Well, there's plenty of room in the other areas on the site for any of the wildlife to inhabit at the time. One more for you, Alyssa. How will you treat the soil where the invasive plants were located? Is there a risk that the new plants won't take because they were replanted in soil that still has chemicals or poisons in it? That's also a really good question with the allelopathy from Brazilian pepper tree. And I might have Carolyn jump in on this with me if she would like to um, for the impact on, on the trees that we're gonna be planting. I think that we should, uh, shouldn't have too many issues with that. One is because we're actually planting those plants. One of the ways that allelopathy works is it's in that, that duff, it's in that layer of leaf, leaf litter that's there and that prevents seeds from germinating. And so I think since we're planting uh, mature plants in those areas and we have cleared uh, the area of those trees, we should get a good response and a good take of that new material. Next question, Alyssa or uh, Carolyn, feel free to jump in. Uh, is kudzu one of the invasive plants also being removed? Kudzu is not actually at this site. So the vine that we're seeing here is air potato. So if you've seen a vine around in here, you're really looking at air potato. And Carolyn, when we've been out there, have we seen some sort of philodendron maybe as well? Yes, exactly. I think there are some uh, kind of cultivated houseplant species that have uh, gone astray out there as well. And maybe that's what people are, are uh, thinking might be kudzu. Um, Alyssa, what impact will this have on our ability to walk along the canal or cross the old bridge? So all we're going to be doing is we're having that time period where we're going to be in there working. And of course, we want to make sure that everybody's safe and uh, leaving that work zone alone to make sure that they're able to do their job efficiently and quickly as possible. So you'll want to avoid the area during that time. But other than that, we're really not, uh, it should not be impacted to be able to walk around that site. Uh, the next question, Alyssa, there looked like there was a lot of dead vegetation in this video. Will that be cleaned up at the same time? 
Yes. So I think a lot of the dead vegetation you might be referring to is the Brazilian pepper tree. So the Brazilian pepper tree kind of has this growth habit where you see a lot of leaves on it for a while, but as it creates that thick tangle of branches, a lot of those branches end up not having leaves and they appear like they're dead. Um, and I think that's probably what you're referring to. So that's all part of that Brazilian pepper tree and that's all going to be removed in this effort. So the next question is for Carolyn. What plants will be planted along Bryan Dairy and will be visible from that roadway as motorists drive by, replacing the Brazilian pepper view? Good question there. That has not been finalized yet. It may be um, some of the same species that we see in the presented palette, including um, things like wax myrtle, some of those trees, southern red cedar and elms. Uh, it's likely it's going to be from a native palette and similar to the plants that are being planted elsewhere in the project. We're waiting until we have that area cleared to find out where and how many plants that we can put in there to replace uh, the trees that are being removed. Alyssa, have any other invasive projects been successful? So this is one of the starts of our program. So we, we have not had a lot of other areas. However, the county has had a lot of different examples of sites where we have used contractors to remove invasive plants on, uh, on property that we own or maintain. And those have been successful when we're able to remove the plants and then follow up with maintenance to make sure that the, re the plants don't reinfest. So our next question, uh, Alyssa or Carolyn, Will there be anything planted in the large open area that doesn't currently have any plants? Go ready to take that one, Alyssa. <laughs> um, there are no plans for that now. We do anticipate that that area will be used for staging for this, um, for the removal uh, and uh, the contractor to use at that time. The, we can in the future uh, look to see whether we may expand the native tree plantings uh, there and or do something else in concert with the, the local communities. Thank you. Next question for Alyssa. The county also owns property at the north dead end of Tradewinds Boulevard, what Lake Park Drive turns into. This property had trees and plants removed over the past years, but nothing replanted. Can this area be looked at as well? That's a good suggestion, and we'll make sure to make a note of that and look into that. Uh, we haven't planned that far to looking down Lake Park Drive, but we can make a note of that and see if that could be a future site for replanting. Next question, Alyssa. Will this area be accessible for nature walks and wildlife photography once native plants are established? That's also a really good question, especially because it's a really beautiful uh, area. I think currently we have uh, no trespassing signs up, um, and especially we've had some issues that we've noticed in there of some, some trespass issues in terms of dumping and other debris that's been found in there, and it, it, it might be something that we'll have to evaluate. Thank you. So kind of um, going along that same lines, Will you need neighborhood volunteers in the follow-up period to watch for sprouts and seedlings and remove them? That's a really great question, and I'm so glad you asked. That's This is one of those things where we would love to get community involvement. So especially when we're looking at something like air potato, I showed you guys those bulbils, and a really common way that we can get the community involved to help out with this is to do what's called a bulbil roundup, where we go out with bags and we look for those potato-like items and get them out of there because that's going to remove a lot of those, uh, a lot of those plants that are going to pop up. So be on the lookout. We, uh, it is something that's on our radar that we'd like to involve the community with helping out with an effort like that. Thank you to our panelists. Those are great answers. Oh, we have one more coming through. Uh, how can we follow the process? Alyssa? That's another great question. So we do have up on our website, we have a, a link that was actually earlier in here I provided that's going to give you all the latest updates on where we're at in terms of removal and where we're at in the process. So uh, 
I'm thinking maybe Tony might be able to put that up. If not, we'll, uh, it will be in this presentation. And of course, this is recorded and, and we'll be able to provide this. Yes, we'll put the link back up. Sure. Okay, great. Thank you, Tony. So Tony, did we have any other uh, comments or raised hands that came through? I do not see any raised hands. Um, we may give la last call here for anybody that wants to ask a question or, or make a comment. Um, again, if you, if you want to speak, you can um, click on the raised hand icon and then I, I would unmute you and you can ask your question. Okay, well, it looks like, uh, looks like we, uh, we've covered it, Kaylee. Um, we really did have a lot of good questions tonight. So if you happen to join us late, we've been discussing Pinellas County's Invasive Plant Management Program and a project we're doing on county-owned land at 109th Avenue and Lake Park Drive. Once again, this meeting has been recorded and will be made available uh, within the next few days on the project website. And that's pinellascounty.org slash invasive. I'll show you that on the next screen. If you have additional questions or merely want to offer feedback, you can reach out to Kaylee by email or phone at the contact information shown on the screen. And just in case you don't have audio, that's ktravis, K-T-R-A-V-I-S at pinellascounty.org um, or, or phone number 727-464-8970. And I meant in case you didn't have a video. So there's your, uh, there's your project website, um, pinellascounty.org invasive. And um, we're really glad you're able to join us tonight and hope you found the meeting informative. Thank you and good night.